Thanks very much for those kind words, John. It's good to be here. I love the way you closed the blinds as I walked up. The reflection off the head, I know, is a bit rough. But, um, look, I say, it's, it's great to be here. I don't really uh, have a lot to add to the insightful comments that we've heard all morning. Um, I think, though, when you look at what this is all meant to be about, the MRFF, and, uh, you know, joining that bench to bedside sort of gap, that's really very much what you know, CSL and industry, I think, is about. What we'd like to see from the MRFF at the, in the bottom line is facilitating enormously the interaction between academics and industry in a collaborative way to help move those early research discoveries through to a point where major companies like CSL can pick them up and move forward. Um, I think the, a point that I'd certainly heard again and again, and I think Robin mentioned, we've heard it for the last 20 years, is this lack of clinician scientists, the ability to provide the resources and the incentive, and to be quite frank, the, the salary often, for clinicians who are really interested in doing great research to give them the opportunities to do that properly. Um, back in those good old days, they, they were there when the public hospital system had more resources and they could let that happen, but the pressures of you know, service delivery, as we've heard again and again this morning, really make that very hard. So um, if I can start with a brief plug for CSL, I mean, we've, I'm sure most of this audience is aware, we've announced a commitment of 25 million over the next 10 years to provide two fellowships per year of 250,000 a year for five years in each case, focused largely on attracting and maintaining that sort of talent in Australia. And I think Andrew, I'll look at Andrew Cuthbertson, who's the head of CSL R&D, who does all the work. I just stand up and take the credit. But um, I think we're announcing them on Tuesday, the two recipients. Yep. Just as an indication of our commitment to, to that sort of thing, John. Um, the other thing we I heard right from the beginning, um, it might have been Ian, of course, on it's the MRFF is all meant to be a, have a strategy of transformation, really doing transformative things. And I think that's what industry is also looking for, to, to get rid of some of the confusing um, duplication that occurs at times in some of these areas of research. So the good news is I've only got one slide, and I'll be very brief, but that just as shows us what we all know about the value chain of taking early research all the way through to where we add social and economic value. As we go along that journey, of course, the the value increases enormously. On this slide, it's shown almost linearly, but it's actually exponentially. But of course, the cost also increases exponentially. And the NHMRC and various other basic research uh, organisations do a very good job, um, although there's never enough, of course, but they do a pretty much a good job of supporting a lot of the basic research. Industry at the other end, and I hope CSL's included in that, and Again, my second bit of propaganda is just to remind everyone that CSL is now a, a $50 billion company. I mean, we've got 16, over 16,000 employees in 30 different countries around the world. We have major manufacturing facilities in Switzerland, Germany, the UK, the United States. So we have the capability of actually doing something with a product once we get it to a point where we can put all our developmental sort of grunt behind it. But it's always been, and we've heard about it again and again, that valley of death or this bit in between. And I think, again, what industry would really like to see from the MRFF is a focus on that translation, on that joining the bench to the bedside bit, at the same time as recognising, and I'm just repeating myself a bit, but recognising that we need to avoid duplication. So I, and this is just only a personal comment now, nothing to do with CSL, for instance, you know, I wonder whether we should have, in this new world, whether we should still have NHMRC development grants, where they're trying to do... We, we've taken the core expertise of something like NHMRC and trying to force them to do these little extra add-ons because it's the right thing to do. And I'm not sure if that's all that effective. If we've got another source where we can more address that with the right expertise and the right selection criteria, so that the two systems complement each other and they don't overlap so much. Um, on this graph, you can see down there, 
The good news is there's one slide. The bad news is you can probably hardly read it. But <laughs> the, the little bit down the bottom there talks about the uh, Biomedical Translation Fund, which has just been set up, as I'm sure this audience is aware, by the federal government, where the government will put $250 million in, borrowed from the MRFF. I'm sure it'll come back, Ian, at some point. Which I've lost, Ian. <laughs> Not surprising. If I had the choice, I'd leave too, Ian. <laughs> um, anyway, $250 million has come out of the MRFF going towards $250 million to be matched by private enterprise um, to set up a fund which will hopefully cover the sorts of areas that are up there we all know really uh, need to be done. Those applications have been called, the interviews are being had. Um, CSL, of course, as uh, a major Australian company in the area is very keen to participate in this and I'm sure we will in one, one means or another. So I think there is enormous momentum now finally c underway but the MRFF really needs to recognise it and to, and to foster that a, a, a lot. Um, I've mentioned the clinician scientists. I was lis listening the, this morning, virtually everyone said we need more clinician scientists, that we've we're, we're sort of losing out in that area. It's a worldwide issue, we all know that. Um, lots of talk about it, lots of minor attempts, but if there can be a, given that there's a lot of focus here on clinical trials and the translation of that research discovery into the clinic, then I think it's an opportunity to, for us to keep uh, hammering on the fund that that's an area that they need to, to support. Um, there's no doubt, and Again, others have spoken about it, we've talked about it a lot. It is frustrating because Australians, uh, Australian medical research has a great proud record. We've done fantastic things in basic medical research. We have not been anywhere near as effective in translating that research into actual, certainly into industrial or commercial products, but also into general healthcare practice in many ways. And so all I can say is I think you'll find industry will be fully behind the MRFF. Um, We'll embrace it, we'll put real resources in where we believe we can do something. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah.